I love Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is really showing out. Jamal Williams is saying some stuff. And, you know, he has a big personality. I understand that. He has a big ego about, you know, his game. He's been talking about it like, look, I'm a ball. You know, him and his trainer have been talking about it. They've been putting in a lot of work this offseason. He slimmed down. He came into camp slimmer. He wanted to be a more in the space, out of space type of back. Uh, instead of that bruising hard runner, he wanted to allocate a skill set that DeAndre Swift had. And I really admire that. I really do because at the end of the day, this is an adaptive league. You know, being a bruising running back is cool and all, but if you're not winning championships, if you're not really contributing, if you're getting shown up and your team has to pass the ball 30, 40 times a game, you're going to be out of the spotlight, okay? You, if you're going to be a bruising running back in the NFL, you better have a sweet defense next to you. You better have a sweet defense and an offensive coordinator that's going to only go to you. You're going to be the run through. You're going to be good go to. Unfortunately, Detroit Lions, we have a passing sense offense. Now, we have a great running offensive line. We have, you know, three first round picks. We have four highs, uh, four uh, all pro guys. We have, we have a very good offensive line. Um, but I will say this, however, comma, you know, we actually can't run the ball last year because we got played out of games. You know, even when we ran the ball effectively against teams, whether it was the Browns or the Steelers, uh, we still had to pass the ball and we get in passing situations that we couldn't work it out. So his methodology was acclimate a skill set that's going to benefit the team and keep them on the field. Now, Jamal Williams is a bruising running back. But I don't think that's the all-in, be-all of what he is. I think him coming in the camp slimmer, him picking up some explosiveness, I think those things are going to help him and allow him to be a three-down back for us in case DeAndre gets hurt. And we don't have to change scenarios and offenses because DeAndre Swift gets hurt. He's almost a contingency to DeAndre Swift. Now, again, I like... I like him, and I've mentioned this before that I've, you know, I've followed this running back before, and I thought he was a very good pickup when we got him initially. Jamal Williams is a very good cultural pickup for the Lions, but he is on a one-year deal. It'd be nice to see him re-sign with the team because in the small 16 months he's been with the team, I would say that he's really become a fan favorite. Now, in my estimation. I think that he is a middle of the pack running back and there's nothing wrong with that. I think he's not up there with the Henrys and the and you know all these other guys, but you don't have to be. Again, all you have to do is make the most of your opportunities and the best will come out of it. And I think that he is one of the individuals on this roster that not only keep the team motivated, but he's a potential leader in the locker room and a cultural shift guy. So you want to keep that type of person around. Now, I will be scouting running backs all throughout the season, just in case he does not get a contract. I know how business works. I know how the NFL works. Sometimes the NFL is not for long, and sometimes the NFL is no fun for long. So I will say this, that Jamal Williams, I hope you get every dollar you deserve for just the person you are. But I will be looking at the next, the next LaShawn McCoy. I will be looking for the next <laughs> DeAndre Swift, just in case. But we have two running backs who could potentially get deals somewhere else and potentially get uh, contract extensions with the Lions. Also, we have two running backs right now that's that need a breakout season, that need a 1,000 yards rushing in this season. So it's going to be real interesting to see how he fares against DeAndre Swift in that, op, in that situation. I think he's going to have five to 700 yards if DeAndre Swift has 1,000. But I need that offensive line to be healthy for them to do so. I don't think Dan Skipper or... Evan Helm is going to give you that. I think that you have to have a healthy offensive line. That offensive line has to have the continuity. And if someone does go down, 
we need a top tier uh, step up to step up. If we have a top tier step up and we get the most production out of like a, say a Tommy Kramer or even Matt Nelson, if we get top tier backup potential or starting potential, we could have a special offensive line. And I love the fact we have two swing tackles that, that can really do something. Now, again, we have some rookies that came out for the season. I think that that, that, that joined the team in the undrafted for rookie free agent pool. I think they can do something. But at the end of the day, I need the I need these all pros to prove they all pros. You know, I need my left tackle who's franchise as well as my right tackle who's a franchise. Right. I mean, these guys are number one picks. We have three number one picks on the line. We have four people that have been picked for the Pro Bowl. Um, I I need this offense to work and Jamal Williams needs us as well so it's a funny thing playing paying a running back because a running back is just so reliant on everything else around them to be successful you know the the play call the offensive line the blocking on the outside with the wide receivers and obviously getting the look to catch the ball but everything working against Jamal Williams I think instead of him thinking that, he's thinking everything's working for him. He's put in the work, he's put in the training, and I'm looking forward to seeing Jamal Williams on the field. Like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. We're trying to get to 4,000 subs by the end of the season. I think we can do it. It's just 1,800 more people, and I think that we could do that relatively with ease i've seen gridiron blitz do it i've seen micro mike do it i've seen what were sports go from twenty thousand to twenty nine thousand so if we can get there we can we can do it again i don't make money from these videos not no money that you should be talking about i probably make fifty dollars a month but i do like putting out content and i do like getting to the point i do like actually having education or edutainment as i call it in the videos we have scouts we have you know prospects we have 2022 film 22 man film obviously we if you've been rocking with my channel for a long time and you've not subscribed you're doing yourself a huge disservice you please uh find it in the bottom of your heart to give this soldier a like a comment and a subscription today uh this is avery giovanni uh, love y'all. This is Spirit of Detroit Podcast.